So welcome back to another video. Um, so we attach a lot of uh, importance to the idea of uh, having a corporate status, right? And um, you know, before we uh, you know really get so excited about it, that we are studying corporate law, then so we need to understand first and foremost that this corporate status we give so much importance. Essentially, the idea of corporate personality uh, that we talk about, where does it you know come from? Aata kahan se concept? The idea is that a company is not something that you know um, has a life of its own um, unless we give life to it, right? So that's the idea that you know this video is going to cover, and hopefully, आपको by the end of this video clear हो जाएगा कि corporate personality का concept basically कहां से आता है. So as you've already noticed, कि we have a guest in this video, and this is basically my bird. And it's sleeping right here. Anyway, so um, you know this is not just for fun. By the way, um, our little bird is going to help us understand the concept of corporate personality, and we're going to begin right away. So let's imagine that this bird, at the moment, at the moment, okay, um, this bird does not have, you know. And by the way, we don't need to imagine it as a matter of reality. It does not have a legal personality as such, right? So. You know, for example, take me for an example. I have a legal personality that is, in the eyes of the law, I am considered as a natural legal person, right? Focus on that term, natural legal person. However, does this person? Oh, sorry, this bird, right here. Does this bird count as a person in the eyes of the law? You know, as a separate legal person? Obviously, you know, I'm going to give you a moment to think, but you know, you can. Quickly answer that no, it's not. So this bird right here does not naturally have a legal personality, a legal status. So right now, when I use the term natural for myself, you know, or for yourself, if you say that you are a natural legal person, it's pretty much obvious that natural legal person ki matlab ka matlab ye hota hai that we're talking about, you know, individuals like you or me. So uh, coming back to the bird. We know that naturally, this is not a legal person. It does not have a legal status. However, how about we say that you know this bird right here now has a legal status because we're going to give it one. And from this concept, you can think of you know this term that this bird will have acquired a legal personality. You know why? Because not because it naturally had one in the first place. No. Actually, it acquired a legal personality because we just gave it one, and that basically leads us to the idea of an artificial legal person. So, if this bird now has the status of an artificial legal person, you know, as opposed to me, I'm a natural legal person. So now, this bird, by virtue of having this artificial legal personality, is going to get certain advantages, and we're going to talk about those right away. Right. So I'm back, and this time I'm back with another bird. Okay. So let's make this a little bit more interesting. So let's say I give a separate. You know, can you stop doing that? Okay. It's just preening its feathers. Okay. Anyway, so um, let's say that this other bird right here. Okay. Um, we've given an artificial legal personality to this other bird as well, and you know you need to stop doing that. We're, you, we're, you're, you're appearing as a guest in a video, okay? So right, just just hold on. Oh, never mind. So let's say this bird right here um, has also acquired artificial legal personality, and uh, I was talking about the question as to how it matters, why it matters. And you know, basically, the advantage of having an artificial legal personality. So before we move on to companies, let's just you know take these two birds as examples. And for now, just imagine that you know this bird right here as an artificial legal person. Before it had that legal personality, that legal status. You know, just ask yourself: Do you think it could sue this bird? Okay, so the idea is very simple. This bird has an artificial legal personality, and so does this bird. Uh, and the reason this matters a lot now is because 
if I, for example, a natural person, you know, get sued by somebody, oh my God, it just bit me. So if I get sued by somebody, you know, that's something that we all understand because uh, a natural legal person can also sue people and of course, uh, um, vice versa, it can get to, he or she can get sued by people. But how about, you know, an artificial legal person? So the answer is that the same applies to an artificial legal person. Once it has acquired that legal personality, then the distinction between natural and artificial, um, you know, just basically uh, disappears for all purposes. And the fact that the birds now have artificial legal personality basically simply means that they can also sue other people, right? If they can sue, for example, me, uh, a natural legal person, and they can sue each other. You know, both of these are artificial legal persons and this means they can sue each other. And of course, it means vice versa that they can be sued by each other. So for example, this bird right here can sue this bird right here. And this bird right here can also sue this bird right here. And it's not just about suing each other, okay? Or, you know, getting, uh, being sued by each other. Um, the idea is that each of these birds can also, you know, now that they have an artificial legal personality, they can also enter into contracts just like, you know, you or I can. So basically, uh, as a natural legal person can enter into contracts and, you know, uh, become uh, subject to rights and obligations once they do so. So similarly, an artificial legal person can do the same. So this bird right here can now enter into contracts and this bird right here can do the same. So I hope this idea of, you know, artificial legal person, um, you know, is clear to you because this idea can seem daunting and it can seem scary in the beginning when you first start off with company law. But I use these birds as examples, um, hopefully to make you understand that this is not scary at all. It's, it's a very basic concept and you just have to contrast a natural legal person with an artificial legal person um, to the extent that, you know, one is na existing naturally and the other has been artificially created. And that is pretty much it. As far as, you know, if you ask, about the differences between the two, then I would tell you that there are none. So like I told you that the consequences as far as liability, for instance, is concerned, that is going to be the same, be it uh, for a natural legal person or an artificial legal person. Um, so I think uh, that was enough uh, with the birds and coming back to company law now, uh, what I essentially wanted to make you understand is that a company is recognized as having a legal personality and you know that personality we know as corporate personality, the corporate status that we give to a company and that is basically coming from this you know concept of, ha of being an artificial legal person uh, and that has to be contrasted with uh, the idea of a natural legal person that is we human beings individually. Uh, right, so that is it. Um, coming uh, to the main topic, which is, um, you know, as the title of the video suggests, uh, that of having a set of being a separate legal entity. Uh, you just need to remember that the way I use these birds as examples, you just need to remember now that we have given this status, this legal status to a company. Uh, it doesn't matter that it's an artificial legal person and not a natural one. What matters is that it is a legal person and the importance of this is going to be you know pervading all of what we study later on just remember that this particular idea of having acquired legal personality is you know uh, something that you need to really understand if you want to master the basics of company law and later on of course go into the detailed and advanced levels uh, for now uh, just remember that in the next video, when we consider the topic of uh, limited liability in detail, you're going to understand how the two topics, that is a separate legal entity and limited liability are actually interrelated, first of all. And secondly, you're going to understand why it matters so much to have separate legal status when as far as a company is concerned, right? Okay, and uh, to conclude the video, I'm just going to, you know, repeat the, whatever I said about the birds uh, for a company that now that a company is considered as a legal person, you need to remember that it can enter into contracts with other companies. And remember right now using the two uh, birds as examples that entering into contracts with other companies means that you have to be clear about the fact that it's one artificial legal person, a company on the one hand, 
and another artificial legal person, another company on the other hand, who are entering into contracts. So if I were to, you know, conclude this video by asking you, um, can two artificial legal persons uh, buy shares, that is one company buying shares from another company, is that possible? You know, I'll leave you to answer that because the answer is kind of obvious. However, just remember that if you, you know, asked some sort of a, you know, potentially tricky question, uh, for instance, if I were to say that only a natural legal person can be a shareholder, you know, is that statement going to be true or false? So you can leave your uh, answer in the comment section below and I'll reply to that later. For now, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.